the prehistory of the Institute for New Economic Thinking started when I was working with the Roosevelt Institute and I came to recruit George Soros to be part of my team. He said, I don't work in teams, I either fly solo or I'm a sponsor, but I have some ideas for you. George explained to me that from his writing, which I was very familiar with having worked with him in the past, he had been holding conversations, particularly in the area around London, with Willem Bowder, uh, most prominently probably Anatole Koletsky, John Kay, uh, David Hendry at Oxford University about his m kind of curiosity about why the economics profession had gotten so far off course and why someone like himself who had uh, what you might say succeeded in the market test was resisted so mightily by members of the economics profession. George asked me at that point if I would then conduct a study of the profession, meaning how do their careers develop? What are their incentives? How do they get funded? How do they choose what to work on? He sensed at that point that he wanted to do something. And he asked Joe and I to put together a list, which became 25 people, to come meet for two days, dawn to dark, at his home in Bedford, uh, New York. One of the uh, historical precedents that I brought to George's attention uh, was what had happened in physics at the beginning of the 20th century. Classical physics was a system that worked extremely well in the 18th and 19th century, then began to break down. New ideas came in. A man called Ernest Solvay, who was at that time one of the leading industrialists um, in Europe, uh, decided to convene a conference which uh, came to be called the Solvay Conference, in which he brought together for the first time the leading thinkers of the new physical and chemical sciences, which really transformed modern physics. And I said to George, you could do the same for economics. And I think that was part of the uh, mechanism that, that got the idea launched. The Bedford Summit was really remarkable because it brought fantastic thinkers together who were feeling as individuals that they uh, wanted to, I think, change the profession, but can never collectively come together before. And what it did is gave me huge hope that there's a group of people out there that we're not alone, or I'm not alone. There's a group of people out there, many of them much smarter and wiser and more experienced than I am, who really want to come together to change things. And what George Soros has facilitated through this is creating this thinking and energy which would not have happened uh, otherwise. And that is incredibly exciting. It's a huge source for me personally of optimism about the future. I described why I came to, into economics in the first place as being because I was good at mathematics, interested in politics, and I could use the kind of technical skills I have to, to change the world a little bit. What I got at Bedford was a large group of smart people who wanted to do these things, to use their kind of technical skills to make the world a bit better. That's an exciting thing to try and do. It was very exciting to feel like this operation could actually come to be. It's being actually backed by very serious people who know what they're doing, know how to put an organization together, and by very serious money. You know, this is very unusual. This is a very unusual initiative um, from, my, from my point of view, um, where it seems to be driven actually by wanting to make some intellectual change and not knowing exactly what kind of intellectual change we want to make. And that is really remarkable and, 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 and exciting, and I am very glad to be a part of it. What struck me was uh, that you have people from so many different branches of economics come to the subject with so many different strengths, uh, but all sharing this view that the dominant paradigm had not worked and had been excessively narrow, uh, insufficiently open to uh, considering alternatives. Uh, one of the challenges, and remains one of the challenges for INET, uh, is uh, to what extent it should focus, how broad its remix should be. Because uh, 
as you think about uh, the problems facing the economics profession, um, one sees them in almost every subfield. So what had brought the issue to the fore was the failure in macroeconomics, the failures in regulatory policy, the failures in finance. Those were glaring. But those same mindsets, those same hypotheses that had led to such disastrous consequences also help shape economic thinking in every other subfield. So the agenda for rethinking economics is a very, very broad agenda. As the moderator of the event, I didn't know if I could inspire these people to really talk to each other. These are all leading professionals and they probably wear some character armor as they come in and see each other. But we experienced uh, what you might call confessional kind of energy. People who are very powerful, some including Nobel Prize winners, talking about their frustration in the profession, talking about how in one case, a gentleman had acquiesced from teaching graduate students because even though he thought he had good ideas, he thought as a Nobel Prize winner, he would do them more harm than good. The initial conversation, the very first morning, which was led off by Jeffrey Sachs, then people like uh, Nobel Prize winner George Akerlof and others started to talk, and I could feel that they came to play in the sense of being candid and sharing with their colleagues. I felt very good, not about what I was hearing, because it was a description of dysfunction, but I felt very good how much these people were willing to give of themselves that process, that kind of what you might call taking off of armor, created affirmation of each other, affirmation of the mission. And you could see Soros looking at this. I mean, just his eyes would get very large as if, my God, I didn't realize that things were this beaten down or this dysfunctional. It was very, very illuminating, but it was almost refreshing in the sense that you have to acknowledge the problem and you have to confess your frustration before you can start to work on solutions. What was most striking to me in the aftermath of the Bedford Summit was coming back the following day and George Soros and I had lunch, just the two of us, to reflect on what we'd seen, what we'd learned. And I derived what you might call enthusiasm from George seeing how blocked and locked up it seemed. and. Uh, he was quite curious, as he said, I'm not an economist, but when the outcomes in society are so at odds with the ideology of economics, and it doesn't naturally start to evolve, there's some kind of process there, and we just heard about it. And you, you could feel his uh, inspiration to take on this Institute for New Economic Thinking and really build it up was uh, energized by the power of the testament that each person gave about that things were so far off course and that they needed help.